Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the module 2 of Java super important question and this video is sufficient for you to score more than 80% marks in the exam. Don't miss any of these questions, these are all from the previous paper and the model question papers. And before starting, please do like and subscribe, it helps me make more videos like this. Without wasting any more time, let's get started. The first question is, what is method overloading? Okay, there is a concept which is called as method overloading. We will be having a look into that. Illustrate the concept of method overloading with a Java program. Okay, and another paper, the question was, uh, develop a Java program to find the area of rectangle area of circle and area of triangle using the method overloading overloading concept call these methods from the main uh, method with suitable inputs okay you can use the same example for this question as well okay so both of these questions i'll be explaining combinedly one answer for both the questions okay what is overloading okay in java it is possible to define two or more methods okay two or more methods you can define within the same class the same class is present and you can define the methods with the same name okay that share the same name okay if their parameter declaration is different this is needed okay parameter declaration. we will be seeing the example how it actually is then you will be able to understand uh, fully when this is the case the methods are said to be overloaded and the process is referred to as method overloading what do you mean by overloading loading more than the uh, limit right so we are uh, using the same function name to define more than one function okay so this is the class area calculator we have public double calculate area okay this is the function defined for area of rectangle so we have two parameters length and width because to uh, calculate the area of rectangle we need what we need the length as well as the width okay so return length into width method to calculate the area of circle for uh, calculating circle we just need one parameter which is radius but the name is same here and the return type is also same so it will be math.pi into radius into radius because the area of circle is nothing but pi into r square okay then we have the area of triangle for triangle we need three parameters base height and uh, boolean also okay boolean means if it's a triangle or not okay so the formula will be half into base into height okay so here it will be 0 0.5 into base into height now we'll be uh, passing these values here okay area of calculator is equal to new area of calculator now we'll be passing two parameters here 5 into 3 okay means uh, the area of rectangle will be 5 into 3 length into breadth okay and the circle will be pi r square and this uh, area of circle will be uh, half base into height okay and this will be true because we need to pass three parameters they should be different parameters right number of parameters so that's why we are passing another uh just for making it different okay this is actually not required but to make it different from the rectangle one we'll be passing three parameters here okay so this is the example you need to write and the answers will be different even though the function name which is called is same just on the basis of how many parameters we are passing different functions are being referred okay rectangle circle or triangle this is the method overloading next open important question discuss the significant features of the following keyword this and static okay so this is nothing but a uh, method will refer to the object that invoked it okay to allow this java define this keyword this means what an object is present and inside the object some parameters will be present to refer the same parameters will be using this keyword okay so an example here is box okay box double w double h and double d now w is width and h is height and d is depth okay so we'll be using these three parameters to initialize the values of the box height width and depth okay so we'll be using this dot width is equal to w this dot height is equal to h and this dot depth is equal to d so the values which are passed from here that will be getting stored into the width height and depth of the same object okay that's why we are using this here okay this is the example you need to write and next is static okay static means what when a, a member is declared as static it can be accessed before any objects of the classes are created now usually what happens we'll be declaring a class we'll be creating an object and by using the object we are making changes to it and uh, performing the functions but when we declare it static just by using a class we can access the uh, variables of it without creating an object okay you can declare both the methods and variables to be static okay both the methods and the variables can be declared as static inside the class okay and the most common example of static member is main function the main function which you use okay and uh, there are three uh, restrictions are there static methods can only call other static methods and they can access only the static data they cannot refer to this and super in any way okay so the example you need to write is this class use static static int a static int b and static void met and x is passed here x is equal to x a b all are printed here and another function is defined here static this is a uh, not a function this is the 
constructor okay and it is also static means whenever the class is initialized this thing will be created so static block initialized b is equal to a into 4 so what will be the b's value a into 4 a's value is 3 so b will become 12 initially a's value will be 3 b will be 12 okay so we are passing 42 here so whatever we pass here 42 will be printed here and a's value will be printed as 3 and b's value will be printed as 12 even though we have still not created any object these things will be happened okay without the creation of the object that is called as static the value of static variable will be always be preserved okay what are constructors explain two types of constructors with an example program okay what do you mean by constructor constructor means whenever uh, we initialize an object okay mean whenever we create an object some things will be initialized means some variables will be initialized which are part of the class okay so it has the same name as the class a constructor will be having same name as the class and it resides like a method once defined constructor automatically called immediately after the object is created okay this is an important point immediately after the object is created what will happen it will call the constructor and the new operator completes okay and the return type is not even void an example is given here okay the class box is defined with three parameters width height and depth okay three parameters are defined inside the class box now the constructor of the box will have the same name okay this is the same name which is present in of the class and will be having a bracket here so it will be called as a constructor now constructing box will be printed and width will be assigned as 10 height will be assigned as 10 and depth will be assigned as 10 see we have these three things okay whenever an object gets created what if all these things are empty that will be stupidity right but uh, if we use the constructor here it will be in initializing these values initially when an object is created it will have the width as 10 height as 10 and depth as 10 okay so whenever we create an object and directly call the volume function at least something will be printed instead of garbage value what will be printed here 10 into 10 into 10 which is 1000 will be printed okay so here is the example of this one there is a main function we are calling uh, we are creating a box one and box two we are uh, get the volume of box one so, so volume is called here so volume function it will come and it will calculate width into height into depth so the val uh, value will be thousand here box two also it will be same only it will be thousand okay so see here as you can see both the values will be thousand here and constructing box is printed first where is constructor constructing box printed from it is printed from the constructor here so whenever an object is created box one first this will be called and this will be printed after that this initialization will happen and after that dot volume will be called okay box one dot volume we have called right so this will be calculated and that will be printed okay see we are first calculate first we are creating a box here in this place then we are calling this function and then we are printing the value so in that same order it happens the creation a constructor is called so that uh, proves like this is the program to prove that constructor gets called this uh, constructor which you just saw is uh, just saw is called as default constructor okay now the uh, other one is there which is parameterized constructor in this what happens while, while the box constructor in the preceding example does initialize a box it is not of various dimensions whatever we have fixed it that is uh, the same like 10 10 10 is there but if you want to make it as 20 30 40 right we we have different boxes in the world right we want to have different uh, boxes sizes so not every box will be 10 10 10 so for that what we will be doing is we will be uh, defining a parameterized constructor with three parameters w h and d now what happens is whenever we call this function with the parameters which we pass that parameters box will be initialized okay for that we need to write this small uh, snippet of code so that that specific uh, values are uh, getting initialized in the box variables width height and depth okay so those uh, when we print it it will be different values okay this is parameterized constructor okay Moving on to the fourth super important question, we have defined a class called as employee. Okay, what we have to define? A class called as employee with the fields ID, name, and salary. So there is a class employee with three names. Okay, three things are there inside that ID, name, and salary. This is the class we need to define. After that, what we need to do, write suitable constructors uh, to uh, constructors a method to raise salary and a static method to display. Two things we need to define. One method to raise salary and second is to display. And this two it should be of the constructor form. And the number of employee objects, uh, it will be displayed right suitable main method to uh, for the illustration so our main method also needs to be defined for explaining all of this so very simple first you'll be defining a class employee it will be having id and string name and double salary and the employee count will be zero because uh, we need to define how many employees are there right we need to display how many number of employees are there for that static needs to be used because it will uh, be saving the value how many times this function is called this class is uh, created it will not reset with every new um, creation why because that is 
the uh, beauty of static right static will not uh, reset when a new uh, we are calling the class again it will be uh, constant from the start till the end of the program the other ones will not be constant every time it will be new values okay that is the difference between static and other variables okay so here uh, after we have defined the uh, data types which we need we will be going to the constructor part okay in the constructor part we have id name and uh, salary here so this is a parameterized constructor so whatever id name and salary we pass that will be uh, saved here and employee count plus plus whenever our employee is created the constructor will be called and the count will become plus plus so that one uh, to keep the record of how many employees are created okay and also they had asked to define a function raise salary we will be defining uh, will be accepting a, a parameter percentage here if percentage is greater than zero that salary is that much percent should be added to the existing salary so salary plus is equal to salary into percentage divided by 100 so if you want like five percent increase what we will do take the current salary find out it's five percent and add to the existing salary so in case if it is greater than zero if it is zero means invalid percentage salary cannot be updated you cannot update a salary with zero hike right that's the thing next is display also they had asked so we'll be just displaying id with the current id and the name with the current name and the salary okay and uh, to display the total employee count total employees is equal to employee count this is the uh, variable which is storing the employee count right so uh, that is about the uh, declaration part now we're using the main function how do we uh, do it using the main function employee one employee two we'll be creating two employees here alice and bob with the uh, 100 102 ids and 50k and 60k salaries now before raising salary when we call the display details what should be printed 50,000 and 60,000 right so I have not uh, put the output here but the output will be 50,000 and uh, 60,000 okay after that we'll raise the salaries 10% and 5% so 10% of 50,000 is 5,000 so Alice salary will become 55,000 and 5% uh, of 60,000 that will be equal to 15,000 15,000 1,500 yeah 1,500 so this will become as uh, 61,500 if I'm not wrong but uh, you get the point right after raising salary there will be an increase and when we print that it will be printing the updated values okay and to display the total employee count we'll be calling employee dot display employee count this is the function which displays the employee count okay this is the function you need to write for uh, the given program okay Moving on, we have uh, the next super important question, which is write a program to perform stack operations using proper class and methods. Okay, we have to perform what stack operation. This is a very repeated question. Don't miss this at any cost. Okay, this is a very important question. Now, to perform stack operations, what is a stack? First of all, first of all, the stack means that it is last in first out. Imagine it as books. Okay, you will be keeping a book and taking the book. If you kept the book at the end, that is the first book you will be taking out. So this is the concept behind stack. Okay, so in stack you will be defining class stack with in stack array as new in 10 10 integers array you will be assigning and you will be having tos means top of the stack another integer we are defining after that our constructor we are defining initially top of the stack will be minus one because initially stack is empty there will be nothing to point so it will be at the minus one level okay push an item into the stack means adding an item when we add an item what happens the top of the stack will come here right on the top of the first element so if top of the stack is equal to nine nine means if top is here means we cannot add any more item stack is full will be printed and stack of plus plus toss is equal to item means first uh, the top value will come from here to here and this place will be adding uh, some value so value will be stored here another time it will uh, again increment and add it to the next place like that we'll be doing pop from the stack means if it is less than zero print as underflow means if there is nothing to pop pop means deletion okay so if there is nothing to delete we'll be not unable to do anything but if there is something to delete we'll just do stack of toss minus minus means stack of toss minus minus first stack value will be printed whatever is here and stock minus minus means stack will be pointing to here so that the original uh, stack will be pointing from here and the upper element will be ignored which will be also in other words deleted okay and to implement this uh, function we will be using a test stack another class okay so we have defined test class here which is the void main function my stack one my stack two two stacks we are creating okay this is the same function we are calling here to create the stack of this type okay we have defined one class right so this class uh, one object will be created which is called as my stack one okay my stack one will be created and another my stack two will be created next our step is to push some numbers into the stack so we'll be running a follow from i is equal to 0 to 10 and we'll be pushing the 
the i value okay so what will be the stack value 0 1 2 3 and so on till 9 it will be next is the stack 2 also will be doing the same thing but till 20 we are doing so it will be 0 1 till 19 okay when it will become 20 the for loop will be breaking will be coming uh, out of it next print what is in my stack again we'll be using a for loop to print uh, what is in the stack and pop operation is happening pop means from the top it will be popping the 9 will be deleted first then 8 then 7 then 6 then 5 4 3 2 1 0 so it will print in that order and stack 2 dot pop that will also print in the same way uh, first uh, 10 elements of the top of the stack 2 which is 19 18 17 16 till 10 okay so that will be printed that's all for this video and don't miss any of, the, of this question these are super important ones and uh, please do like and subscribe it helps me make more videos like this and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one